Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. Chess engines have come a very long way. We know the likes of, well you name them, Leela, Stockfish, Komodo. There are many incredible engines. But has anyone heard of Koi Vista? It's written in C++ by Kim and Finn. Koi Vista 7 is now available and this engine is 100 ELO points stronger than Koi Vista 6. It uses about 100 million positions from data used by Ethereal. And also Koi Vista has come out as a neural network. It won the top chess engine championship of season 21 qualification league with an incredible performance, 15 wins. That's one five, 15 wins, 10 draws and one loss. So just to show you, this is a screenshot of the standings in the stage where Koi Vista competed. And look what other engines he had actually outclassed. So we shall be seeing Koi Vista's performance actually against the only engine you don't see in the standings here. Let's say it's the engine below cheese, which I was unable to fit in the picture. It's the only engine missing from the standings. Okay, let's see how impressive Koi Vista is. And what we shall be looking at is not Koi Vista 7, but an earlier version a much earlier version, where Koi Visto is up against the engine we were unable to fit in the standings. So with all the details we need being added, let's see how impressive, not Koi Visto 7 is, but how impressive Koi Visto 4 is. We have ID for opening, it's your opponent, Francesca replies with d5. We see the queen's gambit, and with Francesca accepting it, Coivista opens up this move. Francesca wants to break up this formation and attacks the pawn in the center. This move is very playable. So let's see what follows. This guy on c4 was captured. And though here this guy on d4 can also be traded, Francesca bypasses and chooses to develop instead. So the engine introduced the knight. An important variation which we didn't even go into is that right after e5, what if we got to see this push to the fifth? If you attack this guy, if you now take on c4, you may want to try this. It's all about the center and whether you can keep the momentum going. If you introduce the knight, Francesca will come in with this pin, introduce the queen. You can try this in two ways. One is queen e7. And two is to just take with a check. If queen is seven, there is knight f3. And if you now chase after this knight, after knight d4, once you castle, bishop d2, Francesca would have a plethora of options. One is to take on d5. Two is to hmm, introduce this guy to a5. And three, which looks like the best option, is to just retreat with the bishop. Actually, I guess hitting this guy on d5 might be slightly better. Okay, this is one variation to consider. With everything starting with initial push to d5. Let's backtrack. All we've done so far was to show what could happen if you push for this advanced variation in the queen's gambit accepted. So no d5. 
But after c4 came down, we saw knight c6, then knight f3, and Francesca here takes in the center. Though takes on d4 is very strong, very strong option. Coivisto does something different. The engine cancelled. And what we see next becomes slightly tricky. It was a knight f6, which looks like a normal developmental move. But Francesca got rid of this guy. And of course, leaves the situation tighter with Coivisto. And now the engine calculates what is best to do. Do you take on e3? Do you take a queen with a check? Or do you try something else? If you take on e3, how would you do it? If you take with the bishop, the queens come off. After bishop d6, Francesca should be fine. If you choose to go for option two, by getting rid of the queens, if now this guy on e3 goes, this is very funny. Though Coivisto has far more developed pieces, does Francesca stand better with an extra pawn on the board? According to the evils, the answer is yes. It's not a big difference, but 0.67 is something that cannot be ignored. Or maybe you can. So when this picture arose, the third option we did not consider was in fact the option Coivius to calculate best to play. The engine picked up the queen and placed her, well placed her, here on b3. It's a very nifty initiative. From basically very little, there are things now happening. Do you stop the check on f7? Or do you take first with a check? And what about f7 right after this? If you take with a check, do you capture this guy? And if so, how? And the other option to consider is whether protecting the incoming check on f7 comes first. Because it makes some sense to get rid of this guy with a check first, this is how Francesca plays it. The alternative to this would be either knight h6 to stop the break on f7 or a queen move, something like queen e7. What Francesca did was to take with a check first. But how would Coivisto deal with this check? Do you take? And if so, how? Or do you simply go king h1? If you're able to work this one out, well, these small differences, only then you get to become a much better player. Is taking with the king okay? It's not because if you allow the bishop to come in with a check, bishop e3 takes, takes, and queen e7, rookie one looks fine. But it will be Francesca the engine that has the edge. Even bishop e6 works. Take, take, get rid of everything here. And once the knight develops, Francesca will then castle and Coivisto really buys the farm. And Coivisto did this differently. The engine took an f2 with the rock and this rook was pinned and though Francesca is pressing, is this rook on the second now lost? First things first. Though bishop e3 is strong enough to stop everything, Corvisto does this differently. The engine took an f7 with a check, the king moved east, and if you are able to work out the continuation, log off and take a break. This is why I love engines play. It's all about the position of the rook on f2. Once you are in a position to save him, this king on f8 may be a sitting duck. Coivisto blocked everything with this bishop move. And with these two bishops departing, if you take on f7, you will lose your lady. How? In with the double check. 
and with his majesty forced here. Not only the knight drops, but the queen too, and this will be it. Coming back, when this pitch appeared, knight of six would be ideal, but go for this, and the bishop now escapes. If you now attack the queen, and of course the rook, this check will be a blunder. Because after queen f6, take, take, using the pawn. And now rook d2, and we do have some equality. But if you try this check from c5, the tension is still on. And you will get better results. Block with the queen, trade, and if you now capture using the king, which looks to be your best option. You see this rook on f2. Get him to move away from the knights and come in with a check is really the icing on the cake. Go king d8, Francesca's position becomes increasingly difficult. The best move has to be this knight jump to the fifth. The tactic is crystal clear. The only way to stop the incoming fork has to be this knight repositioning. And the Koi Vista is a full pawn down. After the knight comes into the game, it's all about bringing this corner rook into the action. Koi Vista would have plenty of compensation with what you see here. So we tried king takes and we looked at what knight of six does too. We're going to look at a third option here because this is how Francesca played it. The engine introduced this queen challenge and wants the queens off. What does Coivisto do? He accepted. Now would you capture the queen? There are one of three ways to do this. Francesca uses the knight from the king's side, but actually this is a full blunder. If you take with his majesty, cover this bishop in this way, and if you now introduce this knight, knight c3, looking at some stage for knight d5, but let's see what happens if you hunt after this knight. Squeeze him with this check, back off the king to f8, and this is like a very beautiful variation. Should the knight come off, isn't this a knight? Then why not let's hear it? I think this is a checkmate. So, though this knight is chased after, Francesca will not be able to remove him right now. If you block the axis to the back rank in this way, it is logical to say this knight on g5 needs to flee. If you reposition the attack on the rook, rook g8, and the very impossible move will be this knight jump right into e4. If the knight is arrested, take on e4, and what you're looking at is a checkmate. Rook e8 gets you busted instantly. Both, or actually, there are four different moves that work. In fact, to stand correct, there are five moves. One is knight d8, which is a mating one. Two is knight d6, which is a mating one. Number three is knight g5 check with a mating one coming. Four is knight takes h6 check, which is again a mating one. And five, there is also this knight move to the corner, again with a mating one in progress. The only move that doesn't really work is knight e5. But still Francesca will not be able to survive. If after rook g8 and knight e4 you go bishop e6 to block the access to everything, will definitely lead to getting an attack on the knight. And should you go to eliminate this knight, you have been warned this will backfire instantly. Launch this check. And with the knight removing him, take this bishop with a check, and there is your checkmate. And let's hear it again. Ah, checkmate. There are 1,001 variations to consider. 
So with Francesca going for this specific move, Corvisto returns the bishop to safety. Francesca opens up on g7. And there is a reason for this. But with the knight coming in, boy, this king move, still everything falls apart. In with a check, and of course, king g8 is asking for trouble. Though the knight can easily come off. Put this rook back along with the knight, because there is a way much stronger response in this position. Move of the day would have been this retreat to the fourth. Can you see it? Knight f6 is a mate. Francesca could not stop it. So after this check, the king found the sixth. Coivisto protects the knight in this way. With Francesca getting the bishop in, just to be able to get the two brothers on the background to both communicate and spring into action, Coivisto too introduces the queenside knight. The rook now being attacked, this rook backed off to the fourth, and with the knight now making his way to block this rock. Check out how resourceful Coivista is. He attacked the knight and when this guy came off, Coivista jumps the knight into e4 and this response is paramount. Can you see the tactic here? Right after knight e5, the corner rock made his way here. Francesca rushes to cover it's all part of a bigger plot. With the rook chasing after the knight, knight d7 looks like a fantastic attack. Though the rook can move to safety. Rook c3 speaks volumes. But why didn't Coivista go for this move earlier? And there was a reason for this. It had to be either one of these two moves. Actually, rook c5 is the stronger of the two. If knight d7 is only to lure the knight to attack the rook. We know rook c3 works because after rook h3 the knight will drop like a fly. And yet there is a much stronger position to reach with what you see here. What does this knight move do? Should this rook be arrested, Francesca would have fallen into a mating trap. Can you spot it, guys? It's why this check with king h5 forced, bishop d1 is a mating one. Knight f6 is an instant mate. Knight g7 is another instant mate. And another way to get there is via this mate from g3 and why not let's hear it for the nth time today checkmate do not however expect engines to fall for these very cheap tricks in the 70s they did they did fall for them in the 80s far far less but come the 90s what you see here will not be possible it's very interesting how engines get confused and this has to be another classic. If you tie up the knights in this way, you will still, well, you will still lose something, but at least you're not getting checkmated. If this knight comes off, at best you have this fork. And if you, if you go for this rook move, even if the rook drops, would you be really able to find a way to checkmate? Coming with this check, and for sure a move in the wrong direction, will be catastrophic. And let's demonstrate. King h5 will lock in a mate in two. After rook f4, that would be it. And let's hear it without waiting for Francesca to move. Checkmate. Go king g7, remove now the knight, and okay, you do the maps. 
and tell everyone what is what. Coming back, when the night came under the fire, Francesca self-destructs. No night is free, but the engine eliminated this guy. And with the night disappearing, Francesca got the night back to safety. But is this position playable? Corvisco is up by a full night. He's down by one, two, three pawns. And where are we in the game right now? We are halfway through. Rook G2, Francesca chases after the rook. Koivisto applies this check. And with King G7, Koivisto continues with the checks in this way. And what we get to see here is again, wicket. In fact, Francesca couldn't help it. She got the king here that is waiting for her execution. Knight c7 works a treat, but what if I told you there is a stronger response? For those who want to explore a bit further, it is. And do pause if you want to buy yourself some extra time before you see the move. I'm back in just a sec. Okay, here we go. It's rook f2. Knight f5 to block the mate on f8. And this is what you need. And it slides out. Quavista applied this discovery. His Majesty is ejected to the seventh. With the rook now departing, Francesca attacks the rook. Rook e2. Bishop f7. This bishop departed. And with Francesca getting rid of the knight from the corner. Coivisto gets his bishop to safety. It's a home run. Francesca is just waiting like a sitting duck. Knight f6 led to this knight move. The knight came under fire and we get another pawn biting the dust. Francesca delivers this check. King h2 led to king move 2. C6 was eliminated, and with this desperate run to nowhere, the knight just absorbed him for breakfast. Knight h5, rook f2, and here Francesca chases after the shadows of the sky. It's funny how engines react, and especially here. There was no move by the one of these two guys. This is how Coivisto did his magic. Knight g7 led to this knight manoeuvre. The bishop came off to the knight. And what you see here is a mate lurking in the background. Rook e1. And the big move in this game was how Coivisto does what he does. It was his king run to the third. How do you stop the mate after rook h2? If you go rook h1 to cover... After this blast, even rook c2, the game is over soon. However, right after king g3, Francesca checks the king, but after the king escapes, only now we saw rook h1. This changes nothing. Rook c2 was the icing on the cake. Locking the mates in six, in with a check to just delay the inevitable the rook is attacked, and if rook h5 was a hard move to find, the appears Francesca found it impossible to cope. This is what the engine does, and actually speeds up a mate in six to only a mate in two. And we need to really hear this. Which also adds to yet another blunder when it comes to the engine world. What on earth did Francesca calculate? And what did you expect? Coivisto just went for it here. When this check materialized, the rook returned to block, but with his instant removal, we also saw a checkmate, and why not? Let's hear it at least for the last time today. Okay. 
checkmate. Yes, engines blundered so. And it doesn't matter what engine you're looking at. We have seen some very poor, very, very poor choices made by Francesca. But to be fair, Coivisto had dominated from the word go. Mind you, this is Coivisto 4.4. If you want to see how much stronger Coivisto 7 really is, you will need to wait that bit longer. And this is how Coivisto really wins today's game. Not only Coivisto is an incredible engine, but he had also impressed the other top engines in this season's games. More to follow for sure, so until soon all, your chess puzzle are here and you know the drill. Safety always first.